everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us, and I really uh, thank uh, Daniel for the introduction. Uh, Dr. William has given a very, very good uh, primer on how we diagnose as, and evaluate structural heart disease, and uh, Dr. Ivan so far has uh, given a great uh, breakdown on how we treat them. I'd like to take credit for some of those uh, videos that he's taken, uh, but not all of them. Uh, so thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, I know it's a tough time for everyone, and uh, so I hope everyone's keeping well. And for my patients that uh, have promised to join and uh, to, to listen, to learn a bit more, I hope you're doing well as well. So shall we start? Uh, these are some of my interests and a bit of what we do. And I'd like to share with you uh, what we do in the laboratory. So this you will see uh, is an example of the lab. And that's us busy at work. And you will notice on the bottom left-hand corner uh, with Ivan, that's uh, Dr. Ivan right beside. And that, that's us doing a procedure to close a hole in the heart. Here we are to talk about a topic. It's about the elderly, as well as the quality of life, and especially when they have structural heart disease. So why exactly are we focusing on this? Number one, we know that patients in Singapore or people in Singapore are increasingly getting long-lived. Ladies tend to do better, uh, maybe because of better life decisions, uh, but men are catching up as well. And in the past 10 years, you can see that life expectancy has been increasing, and this will continue to be the case. Our fertility rate has been plummeting, so now we only have about a total fertility rate of 1.1. Uh, there's a peak every dragon year, which is probably an interesting uh, Singaporean phenomenon. But essentially, what we have right now is a rapidly aging population. And the newspapers will address this as a silver tsunami. So by 2030, we know that one in five of the population will be elderly. By 2050, an amazing one out of two, half of the people will be elderly. So the graph on the lower left-hand side, you, you'll notice that you see that that's our population pyramid and it's no longer a pyramid. Now it, look more, it looks more like a vase when uh, there are more old people than young. And obviously, as people get older, what we call a dependency ratio will go up, meaning more old people need care. So why do we want to focus on the elderly? What, what's so special about the elderly? Here we have to talk about aging and it's really more than just years lived. It's not like a um, 70-year-old man is twice of that of a 35-year-old man. There are really deep differences in physiology, uh, organ function, reserves. And when you treat an elderly person, it's really not just based on age. It's complex and it com includes a combination of uh, medical issues, physical issues, as well as the mental or, or psychological welfare of the patient. And this leads to individualized care. Every patient is a little bit different. And this is a quote that I quite like, and it says that a common misconception that's changing in a geriatric cardiology, that's a cardiology for the elderly, is that those that are old cannot be treated aggressively, which is patently not true. Uh, many of them can be treated well and with a very good outcome. Then again, let's bring it back to structural heart disease, especially for the elderly. What are we dealing with? Because structural heart disease as a field uh, affects the entire lifespan of, of, uh, of people. So for elderly specifically, we bring attention to valvular heart diseases as well as uh, perhaps some other specific conditions that can affect the elderly more so. What are we talking about? We know that in those that are above or equal 75 years of age, about one in eight of them uh, have moderate to severe valve problems. Just imagine that eight people in a, in a coffee shop together, one of them has moderate to severe valve problems. This can be a combination of different valves. So usually it can be the mitral aortic valve. I think that Ivan and Charles William has uh, explained a little bit. And just to bring us back to the heart again, I, you'll see this model many, many times uh, today. Uh, it's the, the things on the right hand side of the screen, which is the red thing. So the mitral valve and aortic valve, these are the ones that channel blood to the rest of the body. And we know that they're under higher pressure. So they do have uh, issues more often. Specific to the mitral valve, uh, these are some video clips that I have for you. Uh, so the video clip on the left that's playing now shows a really, really tight valve. This valve is supposed to open all the way, but instead you see just a tiny little opening, and that's called mitral stenosis, when there's tightening of this heart valve. And right now, on the right-hand side of the screen, you'll see that this valve is opening well, but there's a little segment. I, can't, I don't quite have a laser pointer, but if you look at the lower right-hand side of the image, you can see that it's flipping upwards towards the screen, so a little segment that has torn off, and that causes for severe leakage of this mitral valve. An example of an aortic valve disease, there's another valve. This is a side view of a valve. You can see that 
uh, the valve leaflet here is supposed to be opening fully, but it just kind of uh, wiggles on the spot. It doesn't do so well. And on the right side, uh, the color that we see here is a simulation of blood flow within the heart. And you can see that there's severe leakage uh, for this aortic valve specifically. Again, this is a side view of the heart. What do we know about heart disease in Singapore specifically? I think um, Ivan has talked about this, uh, alluded to this. In Singapore, this, uh, this is a, a study from our center itself. We say we have patients with severe aortic stenosis, which was the condition on the left just now. Age of presentation, or when we diagnose them, is about 71. They tend to present with uh, just breathlessness. An amazing 40% of them, 40 of them didn't actually want any kind of intervention or surgery. And quite tragically, one third of them don't do so well. They pass on from this condition. It is quite scary. So as an elderly gentleman or, or lady, how do you know you've, if you have a valvular heart disease or structural heart disease? This is a quick handy guide from the American Heart Association. So you can have chest pain, palpitations, that's a fast heartbeat. You can have breathlessness, a bit of lightheadedness, giddiness, swollen ankles or feet. But these are not in any way specific and many of our patients actually tell us that they, they feel pretty okay. Except that they just feel like something's not right. So it can be very nefarious and it really nebulous. It's hard to find out and hard to figure out exactly what, what is their problem because the elderly tend to have many issues and this can confound the whole picture and it can make things complicated. And how does this affect quality of life? Uh, this is a good quote. Quality of life is really not about the absence of death, but life with a vibrant quality that we associate with a vigorous youth. That means not just being about being alive and watching TV and eating your meals, but being, being uh, energized and being, uh, being vigorous. And we know that patients with severe symptomatic valve disease, they can have large impacts on their function, even life expectancy. The chart on the right is actually a questionnaire that we tend to use to assess uh, quality of life. And I just bring attention that it really isn't just about medically how you're doing, but also your psychosocial health. For example, how you're feeling, do you have pain, are you functioning well, and how do you feel about yourself? Then again, how do we improve our quality of life uh, exactly? If you have structural heart disease, you have to focus and as an elderly person, um, the, the conditions can be complex. So you have to make sure that medical conditions are well taken care of. And for example, uh, old people can have lung problems, kidney problems, heart problems, and all in combination. We have to make sure these are treated well. Then of course, there's element of psychosocial wellness. Um, you can be, have a healthy body, but if you are cooped up at home, which I suppose many people are right now, you probably don't feel so good about yourself either. And we have to closely monitor for symptoms as well as progression. Then what do we have to do about it? Do we replace or repair these valves uh, if they have problems? A lot of elderly people, they, 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 they tell me that, hey, Dr. Lim, I, I'm old, I, I don't need anything, I don't think I should have treatment, I, why, why do we do all this? And the truth is, medicine doesn't really take us so far when you have severe structural heart uh, disease problems. Often a structural problem, uh, like Evan says, you need a handyman and you need to get things fixed. The, the door doesn't fix itself uh, with a coat of paint. So in, we know that from studies uh, in the past that in selected elderly people with uh, valvular heart disease or structural heart disease, in a well-selected population, surgical treatment can bring them very close to their peers in terms of survival as well as quality of life. And that's the key point of all these graphs that I'm trying to show you. Should we consider invasive treatment if, uh, if uh, I'm a patient and I have a structural heart disease? It is very complex and that is where uh, we as your cardiologists or as your doctors have to help you with this. The patient and the family and the heart team as are the center of this, as you can see from the graphic here. And we take in a, a whole bunch of factors that affect our decision making. It includes your surgical risk, how you're functioning well, what do you want in your life, how you're feeling now, your cultural values, age is just one small part of it. And of course, with the way in the pros and cons of uh, going for invasive treatment. This is a more complex table. Uh, for estimation of surgical risk, which a lot of elderly people are rightfully uh, concerned about. Just remember, age is just a number, and literally so. 
it is just one component amongst many things that, that uh, we deal with or and we, are, what we assess patients for. So what we're dealing with is something called frailty. So some patients, they are 80 or 90, but they walk like they're 60 or they look like they're 60. And these patients are definitely not precluded and not excluded from any kind of treatment. So what alternatives are there if uh, you're elderly and you have structural heart disease? Many of them don't do well with open heart surgery, although that is not 100%. And for those, we have the option of transcatheter valve therapy, as what uh, Ivan has uh, mentioned. I'll just give you some examples of this. So this is uh, one of the devices that Ivan has showed you that includes, um, that helps to grasp leaflets that are, that are leaky and bring them together. This is a major trial and it shows that uh, patients here are old. They are 71 years uh, on average and they do very well with treatment. They live longer, they feel better. This is an example of a patient that we have, uh, 82 year old gentleman uh, who has lung, kidney, blood disorders, heart valve disease, as well as severe valve leakage. And you can see that with such complex medical history and being old, he still underwent successful treatment. Uh, this is a clip. So if you draw your eye to the two, two dots on the middle of the screen and you notice the bottom clip is closed, the top is partially closed, and this is us uh, deploying in the process of deploying this clip to tighten up the valve. Quality of life, uh, essentially this is a chart to show you how it does well. Uh, higher score is better as, as always. So. The blue line represents patients who have undergone therapy. And you see that right after they undergo therapy, on just one month after that, they feel much better than those that who have not. And this is a sustained, um, sustained effect that lasts them all the way through up to two years and, and prolonged follow-up. This is another procedure that uh, Ivan has mentioned. It's called transcatheter aortic valve implantation. And again, this is a, a trial that came out about 10 years ago for very elderly patients who were deemed uh, not fit for surgery. They were 83 years on average. This is an example of us deploying this valve. 83 year old lady, again, strokes, high blood pressure, cholesterol. She's even had cancer and surgery prior. And with us, she had severe aortic stenosis. This is an example of us deploying the valve. This is a similar image to what uh, Ivan will have showed you. So again, to draw your eye to the middle of the screen, you can see this mesh-like uh, structure. That will be the valve we're deploying with the assistance of a balloon. And you can see that with this simple deployment, you can see that the valve is left behind and what, is, what you have is a working uh, aortic valve. Of course, this has to be done in the hands of a, of a good team. Quality of life improvement, again, higher points, it's always a good thing. Uh, there's a jump one month after the procedure, after a bit of recovery. And again, this is a sustained a sustain, uh, effect that patients have in the experience. They feel better about themselves, whether it be physical capabilities, whether it be symptom frequency, quality of life, and more, most importantly to many of my patients, social limitations. You want to not just be alive, but to be able to go out and meet your friends. So they have sustained benefits uh, even up to one year of follow-up. So in conclusion, what we must learn, or I, I hope what everyone has learned from this, is that the elderly are a special group that we give uh, special attention to because they have so complex. They have unique physiology as well as needs. And when we deal with patients who are older, we have to be holistic. We have to think about their symptoms, quality of life, risks, and well as their preferences, which really drives our whole decision. Age is just a number. Just being old doesn't mean you should not be treated. In fact, in 2030, many of us are old and by 2050, half of us will be old. So surely we cannot be not treating half of, uh, of, of, of Singaporeans. And of course, modern option of transcatheter valve therapy improves uh, quality of life sustainably. So patients can live better, they can live longer and they can function the way they want to. So being in Singapore, we have to have a test after every talk. I guess this is a uniquely Singaporean phenomenon. So here's our test uh, after my talk. The following symptom could suggest possible underlying structural heart disease in the elderly. We just have to choose one of these. Uh, the four options are shortness of breath, constipation, dry eyes, hearing loss. So again, just to reinforce, uh, elderly patients sometimes you, you you may not have, have non-specific symptoms. You may just feel like you're not yourself. 
but as an example of a possible symptom, uh, what, uh, what, which one of these four tend to be more prominent? Okay, let's take a look at the poll. Brilliant. So I see that 100% have gotten this uh, question correct. So I think I probably will give myself a clap for doing a good job giving a good lecture. <laughs>